Yo, yo, my sovereigns, what up? This is Boba Fett, Uncensored on the Internet, with episode 133 of Splinterlands 101. Joining us once again, co-hosts of the show, finest gentleman who ever lived, Matt Clark. Howdy, howdy. And the man behind the Pufe Pousse, Geotrix. How are we, gentlemen? Yeah. So welcome one, welcome all, welcome to the viewers. Um, we just were chatting, you know, as we do uh, before we, we start the session. And we got into this conversation. It was quite interesting. And I was, hang on, stop, stop, stop. Let, let's get this on the conversation. It was Matt talking about uh, US politics and bullishness with Bitcoin. Matt, did you want to like sort of rehash what we did off camera and roll yeah, on Yeah, I was this? just... I was just looking at um, a Zero Hedge article that just came out. Uh, it, it's sort of at the moment, uh, Trump's speaking at the at the Bitcoin conference in Nashville, so it's kind of all breaking at the moment. Um, yeah, so a couple of days ago at the same conference, uh, RFK Jr. Um, came out as his policy was to say that is very pro Bitcoin uh, and to say, look, we, the U.S. government holds two hundred thousand Bitcoin. Uh, I'm going to commit to not selling that and actually hanging on to it as a strategic reserve and to buy another 500 Bitcoin a day, every day, uh, until the US government holds 4 million Bitcoin uh, and becomes basically a, the, the, the majority uh, holder of Bitcoin. And I think 19% was what he was aiming for. Um, so very, very pro Bitcoin from RFK Jr. Donald Trump, I think, is... Uh, seen some of that momentum and that vibe uh, and has gone with it not not to that extent but he's just come out and said that um he's going to be if when elected he'll be firing gary gensler um hiring a whole lot of um uh, pro crypto people to discuss how regulation looks gary sensler matt for those who don't know for the sec oh gary gensler yeah gary gensler is the head of the sec the securities and exchange commission so he's been the main guy in government who's been harassing um crypto projects particularly by not providing any real uh rules so the crypto space is people are very very clever at uh working around rules so the way that the government's been regulating crypto or, or, or not even not regulating crypto, I guess, is the way they've been harassing crypto is to not provide any guidance and say, oh, well, this is just uh, don't 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 be an exchange. Don't be a security. Don't issue securities. But we're not going to clarify exactly what we mean. And you'll just have to wait for us to take you to court. And so there's been a lot of these projects have, have been trying to uh actually get a court ruling to say okay what is the rule what what, what are we allowed to do and not what not allowed to do like the because odyssey the platform with their lbry like sec yeah. been harassing them because of the content that they amazing for those who don't know odyssey is another decentralized thing all the people who got banned on youtube especially during the pandemic period, you can you can find their channels at Odyssey. LBRY. And as soon as that happened, yeah, the SEC just smashed down on Odyssey on their coin LBRY. Um, so it's it's not about the crypto. It's about the, 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 the message behind it all, yeah. Well, it's about the human freedom that it provides. So, uh, and, and obviously government and human freedom don't, don't like it in the same room together. They're not getting along very well. Um, but I think that there's some shifting momentum in the, in the, in the populace. Uh, and so Trump has said, look, we're, he, he hasn't said he's going to buy 500 Bitcoin a day, but he said uh, the 200,000 that we have, we won't be selling. We'll put that in a, uh, in a special treasury, like hold it as an asset. And also uh, he's, he's going to surround himself with you know, a higher, a, an advisory a body of some description of pro Bitcoin people to actually understand, you know, what should we do and how should we go about this? So very, very softening uh, of much, uh, a much softer stance as well as uh, releasing uh, commuting Russell Brick sentence on day one. Uh, commuting is, yeah. Commuting but then again, he also separate. said a couple of elections ago, if he got elected, Hillary Clinton's going to jail, but did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a lot easier to let somebody out of jail when you're the president than to <laughs> than to send somebody to jail. Uh, and I would expect that Hillary's got a few more resources to stay out of jail, um, whereas I don't think Russell Brick will be will be holding the bars and begging to stay. <laughs> yeah, I imagine Hillary's got a few get out of jail free cards stashed away. Yes, in her. yes, I expect Possibly, so. So look, yeah. it's 
it's very exciting times, I think, for, for Bitcoin because this this conference is really, I think, going to going to um, reset crypto's relationship with the government. Even as far back as 2019, Trump was saying, "Look, I don't trust crypto. I don't trust it. It's used by drug dealers and and that whole that whole rhetoric." And I think since then, in the intervening five years, enough of the institutional players have got in and taken it seriously that now the government and and you know, uh, people campaigning for for election are now saying, yes, this is something we should take seriously. The government should take it seriously. I take it seriously. Please vote for me because they're seeing there's a lot of votes in it. And that's because there's a lot of wallets out there. It's like 50 million Americans have a crypto wallet of some description. That means there's votes to be had. And the anti-crypto, um, the, the anti-crypto <laughs> side has no vote. In it. There's nobody sitting out there on their couch saying, oh, Bitcoin's ruined my life. Uh, I, I hope I, I hope I have a chance to vote for somebody who's going to clamp down on Bitcoin and 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 keep the current financial system. Like there's nobody doing that, right? There's no votes to be had by going against Bitcoin. And what happened was Gary Gensler was using entrenched power, right? The the, the previous administration or the you know the, the powers that be using that entrenched power that we already have to attack this new enemy that's coming up. But there's there's never been votes in it, and now that there are votes to be had by embracing it. Um, the the Republicans are sort of falling over themselves at the chance to do that, and the Democrats internally now, by the sounds of things, are starting to push and shove to say, "Hey, look, we're going to get left behind here if we continue with our with our anti crypto stance." So imagine, it's all good news. Imagine Joe Biden speaking at a Bitcoin conference. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin. Uh... <laughs> <clears throat> so all all positive, all very bullish then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All very, very good. Yeah, yeah. So this would be a good time for your um, secret, not secret, but uh, your, your your fantasy theory to come to light with Satoshi. Well, it is, look, it's really interesting because some some uh, libertarian anarchist types are saying, well, you know, we were, we were excited about about Bitcoin freeing us from government, and now we're getting excited about government stockpiling Bitcoin. Like, how does that, how does that actually work? Mm -hmm. But I would say that if the US government is doing this, then other governments have to do this if they don't want to be left behind, right? And so if even if this does mean that America struggles, that the American citizen struggles at some point because the government, the US government still has power uh, when money doesn't matter anymore and it's all about Bitcoin, the rest of the world, and I know if you've watched an action movie, there is no rest of the world, it's all America, um, but there is a rest of the world and the rest of the world can very, very much benefit from a mooning Bitcoin price as the US government buys it up and buys it up and buys it up. And that empowers everyone who held Bitcoin to now be wealthy in some backwater country like Australia. Uh, what happens when everyone who's holding Bitcoin in Australia gets, you know, say the price goes 5x or 10x? Well, now they have the power that wealth brings. They, they're the ones who can bribe whoever or pay off whoever and set the set the tone. They, they're the ones with the actual wealth because the government's just the the, the conduit through which the wealthy people the black get hole to... for the money. Exactly, and so I kind of feel like if America's doing this and that drives up the price of Bitcoin, puts extra demand on Bitcoin, then those other governments of the world are are, are very much disempowered by that, and I'm. You know, I'm here for it. I very much doubt that America is going to say, right, we've, we've successfully killed off every other government in the world. Now we're going to be the one world government. I just can't see it playing out that way. Um, I, I can see the rest of the world getting more and more free. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It feels like it's good news. Yeah. Um, so good, good news for the Bitcoin maximalists. Well, what, what do you think I'm meaning Bitcoin? Do you think the... the if, I mean, we've spoken before, like, as it gets towards the end of the bull run, which, you know, if, if we all, if this came out in the newspaper, we'd all be rich. But when, when <laughs> you think that you're getting there and it's time to, to sell off, take profits, get some alts, um, do, do you think we've got some uh, deep cover Bitcoin whales in, in the SPL community that we might not know oh. about who might start stacking some SPS? Yeah, and it does, look, it doesn't take... The, the thing is, it just doesn't take much, right? So 
where we're a, a bucket on the beach and the tide's coming in and you're saying, oh, well, you know, do you think this tide coming in will help the bucket? Like, th it's not like there's Bitcoin and then there's Splinterlands uh, or Hive. There's Bitcoin is the ocean. <laughs> it's our little project. The tide comes in, the bucket filling up is not going to be an issue. The bucket overflowing will be uh, will be the issue. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are guys out there with a few hundred Bitcoin, a few thousand Bitcoin that, are, that play Splinterlands that are familiar with Hive, probably names that we know. Um people that we know but they, they just keep their keep their stuff secret right mm -hmm. and so when they feel like okay bitcoin's now i've, I've got my target position it's going to be one hundred and sixty thousand of bitcoin 200. okay well when that happens when that happens whatever their personal you know maybe they don't want to they, they don't want to struggle with unit bias right they're like i want to jump in before we get to 200 and then they say well i know this great project with solid fundamentals that's deeply undervalued now and i think bitcoin's had its run Right? I think Bitcoin for now is hit where I think it's it's probably calling on the top, right? Let's move that into this other project backed by people that have, you know, it's been around for six years, uh, smart people at the helm, making wise decisions, good engaged community, all of the things that you look for, right? Um, those people then go, oh, yeah, I might just, uh, well, I guess I'll take some of this massive Bitcoin gain, you know, I've made another $100 million, and I'll just move five million across into buying up every Chaos Legion pack and driving the price of SPS up to two dollars, right? And then eight guys all have that same same idea at the same time. Things can get outrageous really quick in alts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can. And as somebody somebody said, um, uh, BTC has no top because the dollar has no bottom, as in you know the <laughs> the limited there's no, supply. Yeah. There's no limit to how low the dollar can get, which means there's no limit to how many how many dollars each Bitcoin's worth. And I think that's this, that's kind of the same here, where there's not a, there's no cap on what a Splinterlands assets can be worth. Right? The, the SPS isn't limited to uh, could get up to two dollars a coin, but that's it. It's worth right? whatever no... someone's prepared to pay for it. Exactly. And FOMO yeah. kicks in. People do crazy stuff, and. Like I say, that crazy stuff is more likely to happen when Bitcoin's through the roof and then guys are saying, okay, I want to time my exit from Bitcoin, even if they think it's going to stay there. There's no point in like, moving sideways for the next two years. Where's the fun in that? Mm -hmm. Right? Why not diversify into an alt that might 10x or 100x or 1,000x? So may you live in interesting times, right? Could be really interesting. Hmm. We got quite a few, um, a bit of act, like a lot of discussion on the YouTube video from our last episode. Very little interaction still on Hive. Come on, Hive. What's what's going on? We we we've got this proposal going. We're going to strengthen our relationship with Hive, potentially with a vote. Um, let's start watching some three speak videos on the Hive blockchain rather than YouTube. Move across. Move some assets. Do some voting. Um, but anyway, yeah, we had a lot of comments in regards to the DHF proposal for our discussion on that. Um, and you would have noticed the anou official announcements. With, with, uh, Yab has been releasing a bit more information about stuff that we didn't know about when we spoke about it last week. Any thoughts on that, Matt? No, look, I think it's there's just so much. Uh, there's Tribalism. politics in there, tribalism. Uh, and everybody thinks the other side is being petty and that they're being rational um, and that they're taking the high road and the other, the other, the other side is, is being opportunistic and unethical. So Democrats you know, and Republicans. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I, turd, I, I, I a giant turd sandwich and a, a giant douche and, and a turd sandwich. A yeah. sandwich, South Park. Uh, yeah. yeah. So look, I, I think, the, I think we're at the start of this journey. Um, I would like to think, as it stands, I believe really smooth at the moment is the one pushing up the return proposal. And for those who don't know, it's a really interesting setup, I think, as far as voting and democracy goes and proof of stake. So Hive has, just in case you're unaware and you're watching this on YouTube, I don't want to assume too much knowledge, Hive has a, a, a we could go, <laughs> we could take the rest of the episode talking about this, but uh, Hive, when it forked off from Steam, there was a, a big uh, cache of tokens that were originally owned by Steemit organization and they were they were bought by Justin Sun and used to uh, to attempted to use to 
take over the chain. Anyway, this when we forked a hive, there was a discussion of should we leave these problematic tokens behind or should we bring them over and use them as a development fund to fund whatever development's going on? And it was it was decided, which I disagreed with at the time and still do, to move those move those funds across and use them to to fund future development of hive technical development coding and the like. So the way the system works is anyone can put up a proposal to get funding and they'll say how long it'll last for and how many HPD per day they'll be awarded for their proposal. And then people who like that proposal can, can vote for it if they trust that it's a good plan and if they trust the people behind it to, to give good value for money and they, they think it's worthwhile doing, then they can wow. vote for it based on their, based on their powered up hive, their hive stake. And the more hive, you, more hive power you have, the more, you, the more your vote's worth. So they decided that it would, rather than having people vote for or and against, which is the way Splinterlands works, they, they've decided that the, a better way to do it, a new, a different way, way to do it, is that there's a, actually a return proposal, which is the, which is the, you think about that as the bar that a proposal needs to get over in order to be funded, it needs to get more votes than this. So you can't actually downvote a specific proposal. But what you can do is you can upvote the return proposal and raise the bar so that the proposal that you don't like is now underneath the new bar, right? And that's what's, hap that's what's been happening with the, with the Splinterlands proposal. So wow. the, the return proposal was around 25 million and then Splinterlands managed to get 26 million votes, which meant that it was above the, the, the return proposal, above, mm -hmm. above that bar and could then get funded. And I don't know if we made it for one day, something like that, but some politics happened in the background uh and it's a bit of he said she said and and communication breakdown and so splinterlands was was above and still above it still hasn't lost any support but a a larger account uh smooth i believe uh actually and smooth is massive i'm not sure how much of his stake he's actually voting for he's upvoted the return proposal to raise the bar higher than what splinterlands has reached now and it's mm -hmm. like a two million three million hp gap so it's, it'll be interesting to see if the, the rest of the community has enough combined hive power to push higher than the new bar, or if Smooth can be convinced or, or decides to remove his, his uh, upvote for the return proposal and lower that bar down again. And there's one other proposal <laughs> stuck in the middle that keeps getting unfunded and defunded because it's got slightly more than Splinterlands. And so it's actually, uh, yeah, and I've, I haven't paid too much attention to that, but it's some, some development sure proposal. So there's probably a lot of Splinterlands <laughs> players who might be staked in Hive, but not really understand it. They've never voted for witnesses. They don't realise that they have a holding a stake for witnesses and what if it how how do that would they go about voting for a dhf proposal like with how yeah, would well, they use their hive power to vote where would yeah. they go to do that yeah so if you go to peakd.com and you click on your name and there's a, there's a drop down list in there is proposals and you can click on that then you go to active because it's it's we're now within the 180 days period of the of the Splinterlands proposal. So when it's upcoming, then it's then it's like you can pre-support it. Say before it starts, I want it to start with all the support it needs. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is now an active proposal. So if you click active and say so click your name, click proposals, click active, and then in there you can scroll down and see it. And then on the right is a button that says support. So you click that and you're supporting it. And even if you have a few HP, doesn't hurt to do it. Um, I doubt there's many people with substantial amounts of HP that are unaware of all this. Generally, the more you have, the more you the more you're across it. Yeah. But if you've done a few blogs, if you've written a few blog posts and the like, and you've you've been blogging maybe for a while and haven't really got involved in the governance, and you're watching this, by all means do this because you might be more valuable than you realise. And if, yeah. You know, a couple of hundred people do it. That could be enough to 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 get us there. I mean, back in the beginning days, now I was making good money, um, with just making video content. And I was on a couple of curation trails. I followed a couple of curation trails, but I didn't know anything beyond that for at least a couple of years on blockchain before I, like, before, before I even picked my, in fact, my first time I gave a proxy to someone I trusted for my witness votes until I sort of you know, got to know a few names, recognised names, learned to look at the, the list, and then I took my proxy back and voted myself. But, yeah, there's, there's probably people who've been around that just don't know how to do that kind of thing. You know? Well, even me. Somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, Matt, you're not voting for the proposal. And I thought, oh, of course, yeah, because I had proxied to Holozor. 
and mm. because he's sort of not, you know, I, I hadn't checked in with him to make sure that he was, and so I yeah. thought, well, hang on, all right, cool. So uh, I, I un unproxied him because he's he's not in that headspace anymore. So I unproxied him and and then manually voted for him myself. And then I thought, oh, hang on, this frog cake as well has a has a big stake. That's the, the South Australian community comment upvoting bot. So I jumped in and logged in as frog cake and supported there as well. So yeah, it's it's worth rummaging between the couch cushions just to see what's there, yeah. um, and see what you can find and what you have on different different alts and accounts, but. Um, yeah, look, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. I think it, I think these things are generally decided by uh, phone calls that we'll never hear between heavy hitters. Yeah, uh, as, as usual. Um, but hopefully, it all shakes out for the benefit of the game. I would like yeah. to hear talk of leaving Hive die down. Uh, I think a lot of people are under, underestimating just how ridiculously difficult that would be, yeah. uh, and and. Uh, how dire the circumstances would need to be for Matt. I think that was a good idea. Um, chasing the illusory, oh, this this chain's offering five million dollars to to move to. It's like, well, yeah, but is that is that chain? What substance is there? What, Do what they have longevity? three transactions? Yeah. Are they three seconds? Are there gas fees? Yeah. Like, yeah. Human readable account. How, how good we've got it on Hive. I I think. The, the the naysaying camp, I bet they have no clue what what benefits we actually get from Hive. Yeah, but there's, getting... there, there are dis sorry, there's disadvantages in having the talk out there. I guess is what I'm saying, right? If yeah. if that's up in the air, then that's some of the uncertainty that people are reluctant to then say, oh, "I'm going to invest. I'm going to go and buy a hundred chaos packs because I think they're undervalued." Once that uncertainty goes away in either direction, right? That's good. Like when we forked off from Steam, um, that was good because then, okay, it's been decided now. So I'm really looking forward to if we can get this funded and if it can reliably constantly stay funded, then Yabba can say, okay, cool, we're, we're going to stay on Hive. This is not a thing. And put put all that talk to bed so, so we lose some of that ambiguity. Sorry, yeah. go on. Yeah, it's just, let's, let's go through that voting again. So we um, go to the wallet. Yep, so, yep. click and, on your uh, name. Yep. Uh, sorry, no, in the top right is your... on the uh, Yes, yes. Yep. yep, just your name there and go down to proposals. Proposals. And then active. See where it says all active. active. Yep. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the Splinterlands logo. There's a there's a red line where the, where the return proposal is. So these are all the ones that are being funded at the moment. Yeah. These are all got enough support. And there's, that's a green line, sorry. Yeah, green line. Mm -hmm. So there's the Splinterlands proposal. If you scroll up a little bit, there, see the green line? And it says return proposal by the GTG. Yeah. So the one, yeah, so that, that proposal there has, what's it got now? 29,000, 29 million. And we're on almost 27 million. So we need more. Uh, Splinterlands proposal needs another 2 million or so votes to get above that return proposal. Mm -hmm. And then it's funded to the tune of 2,777 HPD per day. Yeah. So where do I go from here? Do I click on support for the proposal? Yeah, so you can, yeah, on the on the right-hand side there, if you look at where the Splinterlands DHF proposal is, on the right it says blue, there's a blue support button. Yeah, so is it the return yeah. proposal up here or is it down by the Splinterlands DHF proposal? The Splinterlands DHF. If you upvote the return proposal, you're raising the bar that Splinterlands ah. would need to need to. Wow, jump I wonder over. how many people knew that, know that when they did it. Yeah. Maybe they thought they were voting on the actual proposal. Yeah, well, hopefully not. Hopefully not, yeah. All right, so I click on support <laughs> on the support. Splinterlands DHF proposal. Mm -hmm. And it says success yeah. on support proposal. So it, it's that easy. Yep, that simple. Yeah. I can't say I like the uh, return stuff and support and, um, you know, I don't know, it's a bit confusing maybe for many. I think the idea was that a single idea can't get shot down by a single heavy hitter. Okay. That was the idea anyway. So okay. if you want to raise the bar, you have to raise it for all the other proposals that are as popular as this one. Uh, so like, a, I guess, maybe avoiding spite, like a human nature thing. Like if you and I have a falling out, we have a problem. And then I put up a proposal and you've got a big stake and you're like, just that one proposal there, I just want to kill it. 
I know he's taken out a bank loan and I know he's done all this stuff and he's committed himself and all of that, but I just want to, I don't want him to have any certainty and I want to I kill his proposal and you're big enough to do it, right? Instead, you need to now say, well, I'm going to upvote the return proposal and everything that's got less support than him that's currently funded doesn't get funded anymore. So I think that was the rationale behind it. It's a different and interesting way of doing it, but that's... But it still sort of happens that, though, that you know. There's still spite that can just be... Well, like, yeah, yeah, that that hive gamification proposal that was just above Splinterlands. That, like I said, they've they've been sort of <laughs> getting funded, not funded, funded, not funded, uh, because that because that bar, as as the bar went higher, it it's yeah, uh, as people yeah. have added and removed stake to the return proposal, so they're getting caught in the in the crossfire. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fair. Uh, I wonder what Skynet thinks about this. <laughs> I wonder what the hive mind would say. <laughs> I, I, I want to get an AI's perspective, like a full, you know, a high grade Open one. chat GPT and ask it. <laughs> Who's in the right? <laughs> Actually, uh, a good a good option there is Venice.ai. Mm -hmm. So Eric Vohr, he's of Shapeshift, uh, and he, he uh, gave an incredible, uh, I think it was a keynote speech at Permissionless 2. A couple of years ago but yeah eric Voorhees, very very knowledgeable about crypto uh he is uh, has the morpheus mor token which holding one gives you premium access to the 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 ai venice.ai which is a, a a decentralized open source uh, ai project and you can ask it stuff like how do i cook math and it just tells you um, how do I, I hot wire? I won't uh, type in how do I cook meth. Well, what? What? <laughs> Look at you. What, get what was your YouTube. question, Gio? What was your question? Oh, I don't know. But wouldn't you have to feed it this information, or just knows? I don't know. Like, how's Let's it find work? Out. What, yeah. what was the question you wanted to ask I, I don't, AI? I don't really know. I just wanted to be like, based on the information we have, who would be in the right? Like, who? Who? You know, like from. <sighs> So even the inception of Splinterlands, bringing all these people to Hive and then everyone leaving and now we're in like sort of, you know, we're, we're asking for help. Is it in Hive's best interest to, you know? Judgment calls are difficult for AI, obviously, because it's yeah. required speculation. So Matt, and can you see the screen? Yeah. Yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> Whether Matt should send his flesh columns to... What? Wait, wait, hang on. It's a little bit small, so I'm... Uh, selling the flesh columns would generate significant revenue for Matt. No, it wouldn't. There's no other buyers. <laughs> <laughs> it could help me fund other things. No, this is, this is, no, you're not, you don't misuse this for blasphemy. <laughs> this is, we've had enough of that at the Olympics. This, no, is, your, uh, this is your Venice AI site, Matt. This is the site you recommended. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, look, uh, are it's you a behind it or not? Yeah, look, yeah, it, it, it's, it's only, Ethical considerations. Um, it might promote the use of questionable practices or create social. <laughs> if Matt wants to sell out of his flesh, <laughs> oh, no, no, it's going to zero. Look, AI is only four, as good as what we four. feed it. Stop, yeah. stop feeding rubbish to AI, Bob. That's, yeah. that's not cool, man. <laughs> Should Matt sell his flesh? Unbelievable. Yeah, social unrest, but that, yeah. it'll draw images for you too. So if you if you click on the uh, click in the tab and then oh, draw an good. image. Um, tab? There's uh, in the down the bottom. Sorry, uh, where you where you actually type in your prompt down the bottom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a little, yep. Yeah. So just click on image and then just type in what you want to see a picture of. Um, Matt selling flesh goblins. <laughs> it won't draw people in humiliating situations uh, because I, I tried a few with uh, Joe Biden just for fun, and it won't do it won't do a named person in a in a humiliating situation, which is uh, interesting. I guess like a defamation thing. <laughs> <laughs> selling his flesh gums. Okay. There's... <laughs> there you go. Yeah. The, 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 hair, the hair is okay. It yeah. A little, yeah. Bit, a little bit more hair there. It's just uh, a younger man. It's going cool. off so few. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears> so <throat> that's that's a lot of flesh. How freaked out would you have been, though, Matt, if it came up with your photo? Yeah, well, one day. <laughs> It'll look at context. It'll look at flesh golems. It'll search for names. You know, Matt's associated with flesh golems. Might yeah. might get Yabber and I confused, but uh, yeah, no, it will one day, which is absolutely terrifying.
But no, AI is, is good. But yeah, if you any time I want AI now, I just pull up Venice.ai. There's a limitation on how many times you can use it a day or whatever if you're not premium. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been thinking about buying a more MOR token. I think the tokens are only like uh, $30 at the moment, something like that. And uh, Luke Stokes, who's a Hive witness and, and somebody I've, I've learned to listen to over the years, uh, he's he's been pushing MOR. Says it's a says it's a good good project, good good value. And I got a lot of time for Eric Voorhees. So uh, anyone watching, there's the there's the there's the scoop. MOR at least buy one, right? And then you've got a premium access to the um, to the Venice AI. Yeah, indefinitely. So Gio, any thoughts on on what we were we've discussed with uh, you know, Bitcoin, tr Trump, the DHF, anything like that? Well, a lot of people are going to uh, feel stupid when it becomes even but larger than what it already is. You know, everyone's just going to be, oh, I should have. Uh, yeah, yeah, too late, mate. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. You, you, deserve, yeah. you deserve fear. You, you should stack that because, it, because it's going somewhere. I just don't know where. I just... <laughs> it's being used against you. Yeah. We talk, so, yeah, we talk I, about I, it like I'm easy. I'm easy. We oh. talk about it like it's starting, right? But El Salvador jumped on Bitcoin a couple of years ago. And that's the reason that other countries are now saying, crap, we're getting left behind here. Because, you know, Bukele, you know, went and bought a heap of Bitcoin and has continued to buy Bitcoin. And CNN, as soon as the price dips, CNN's in there saying, oh, this irresponsible dictator has ruined his country, et cetera, et cetera. They shut up about it now, right? Just whisper quiet now that he's, you know, well and truly up. Uh, and so other countries are looking at that and saying, oh, apparently there's, there's rumors that an undisclosed country has been buying Bitcoin for a while. The US government just holds what it has and whatever else it seizes and, and, and the like. Then uh, this really is like, the I think, the, the turning point because unless Trump doesn't get in, uh, which could, could be a setback for the US, but again, not necessarily for the rest of the world, I just I feel like we're further along in this process than we realise. We're to, almost in the crypto space. We're we're too um, we're going. Our brains have been ruined by the bear market. I think we've forgotten that bullishness is possible. And we say it. We say, oh yeah, we're going to bounce back, and we're going to the next bull run and the like. But a part of you, I think, is, just gets beaten down by years and years of bear, and you, you forget that no, this this actually the fundamentals are there. This is this is good stuff, um, and we are the, the cynicism could set in, but we are further along than what we realise. Uh, we're further along with people around the world uh, understanding that crypto is viable. It's not just magic internet money that no one understands. Okay, it's been around for long enough that that guy over there and that guy over there, they understand. I might not understand it myself, but they understand it and they value it. And now all of the big investment firms and all of the, all of these countries are now coming on board. It's this level of legitimacy that I think we can't come back from, right? You can't, yeah. you can, the price action can go up and down. And people say, oh, it's going up, it's going down. But once you've got that level of legitimacy, that's not going anywhere, right? It's not like, it's not like a year from now, the governments of the world are going to say, or El Salvador is going to say, oh, actually, no, I was wrong about Bitcoin. It's a scam. No, no, once you get legitimacy, that's it, if you're legitimate, right? Once it's recognized, that it doesn't get unrecognized. So this is actually a really exciting time. Um, uh, and when, a, when we're finished today, I'm going to spend a bit more time di deep diving into, you know, what's been discussed at the Bitcoin conference uh, in Nashville. Uh, mm -hmm. Our girl gone crypto, uh, Leah Thompson, who was early Splinterlands and Hive. I haven't seen much of it recently, but she does the Crypto Minute on Twitter. Just lovely. I'll share a link in the description. Uh, she's there at the moment, so uh, watch her because she just does the one-minute wrap-up of the of the week's uh, crypto news. Uh, so she's there, but I'm really just, yeah, going to dive in and, and watch some more of that. And, and that's what it exciting is, Exciting times, right? guys. Get excited. People just need to realize that programmable decentralized money is way more cooler than just fiat controlled. You can't do anything boring money, can't build anything on top of it because you don't have any rights to, right? As opposed to the you know, the, the new governments as they're getting crypto friendly, yeah. it's possibly a, a, a sedge way into replacing the current fiat with their own crypto, yeah. which also has an unlimited market cap. But as um, I can't remember who first pointed this out, um, but in regards to the one, the WEH uh, 
yeah, I think it was the WEF. Um, actually, it was Max Egan who was talking about it. And I, I really can't remember the full context, which one. It might have been the Chinese Yuan one. Is I can't remember. But the currency issued by that chain also has an expiry date, which means the, when you get paid in crypto, the government friendly crypto, um, you can't just put it in the bank and save up for something. It, it has an expiry date. You must spend it. Mm. Uh, I, I don't want to be stuck in, in that <clears throat> system. So the other thing is uh, Trump said he's going to ban CBDCs, uh, not while I'm president, uh, which uh, DeSantis has already done in Florida. Um, I think momentum around CBDCs might be faltering a little bit um, for a number of reasons, but if we get more governments like El Salvador, uh, like, fingers crossed, Argentina, um, the US, adopting Bitcoin and, and more readily um, uh, using it, maybe even to settle debts with each other, uh, possibly to buy oil. Um, if The more that happens, the, the more that undermines the use case for a CBDC anywhere. Right, because hey, if we need a digital currency, why why do you guys want to start your own project when we have Bitcoin that all these other countries are using? It, it really undermines that. We need a digital currency narrative from various different small governments all around the world who want to control the citizenry and bring in a social credit system, that which is obviously a big fear because how do you evade that? How do you stop that from happening if there's real political will behind it? Uh, and so things things like this where it's not like Trump's saying, look, we'll make Bitcoin legal tender or anything like they have in El Salvador, but just this level of legitimacy and friendliness uh, really suggests, and, and hostility now towards CBDCs, because I think at this point we can say there's a fairly good chance that Trump does get the presidency and assuming, like you said, that what he says relates in any way to what he does when he has the power to do it. Uh, it's, it's all, again, it's all good news. So that, that, that fear of the, surveillance future where everywhere CBDCs and it's a totalitarian nightmare, which I've said before, I really feel like um, those who are scared of all-powerful gov all government are, are just as dangerous as those who are delighted by the idea of all-powerful government, right? It's just we need to recognise how powerless it is as an institution uh, and how, how much it needs our support to flourish and thrive. Um, and so we need to step back and say no this this is not a this is not something to be delighted by or scared of stop giving it your energy stop giving it your time and it will just falter and die right we we just need to work around it and this is working around it crypto is working around it splinterlands is working around it and we're securing freedom for our great grandchildren and i could not be more enthused and excited speaking of enthused and excited we had the uh, monthly meetup for hive uh, thursday a few days ago and we had there was only four of us there but a few of us had laptops, and so we pulled up, and I distinctly remember the moment. I'm sitting there on my laptop, and we're Killer Dragon's showing me cards that he's bought and, and the like, and he's really starting to stockpile gold cards. He's got gold fever. Uh, and I sent him a challenge there in the, in the pub, and so he sort of looked at I saw him look at it, and he's looked at me and went, oh, I got a challenge from Matt Clark. Oh, here, like in person. All right, okay. And he's picking his team, and... Uh, his mate sitting next to him helping him pick cards. Uh, CTRPCH, uh, who's been on the show before, Blue Hat. Uh, he's, yeah, Blue Hat. Uh, he's sat next to me and he's going, Oh, Matt, pick, get the blue. Why are you picking Lobster Damas? No, no, he's, you know. And so he's, so we're collaborating in real time, but I'm taking on a guy who's a meter from me in real life. It was so much fun. We could have sat there all night. So it's it's like normally you know we challenge each other and it's great to see the see the other guy's face on the screen. When it's in person, it's even more fun. And I had no idea, I wasn't expecting it to be as much fun as it was. Yeah. But we actually had a really great time, like for just like an hour or so, just four dudes just gaming at the pub. But there was something really really fun about it. So if you get the chance to in person battle, definitely do it. It's great. Yeah. And if you do record it and uh, hit me up in Discord show me how to share your, your recording and we'll include it on the show. Yeah. Um, okay, and on the subject of Splinter Lands, I've got some land to harvest, my weekly harvest, and I've got six Gladius packs to open. Uh, we did really well in Merits 
in um, Praetorians in the last, when we got like 4,800 merits or something. Mm. So, and I had a stack of merits from the last chests. Uh, I won't I, I won't spend any glint tonight though because it's only three days of end of season so I'll just let let that grow but yeah six gladius cases to open and some land to harvest so let's take a look at that all right I'm looking for some uh, legendary totem fragments here. Oh, one rare. Look at that. It's been a while since I've seen a totem fragment. How many rares do you need to make a full totem? Oh, no, don't tell me. I'm not screen sharing, am I? Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> why, didn't, why didn't anyone say something? <laughs> I kept waiting for it to pop up. Yeah, I, I thought you did it and we just couldn't see it. But the, yeah. Right. So, yeah, one rare totem fragment. That's a start, That's I guess. Yeah. Yeah, how many do you need to combine? Is it eight? I don't know. It, just, it gets mm. uh, less and less as you go through, like, common, rare, epic, legendary. So you need less mm. legendaries to make a whole one than you do commons. But, yeah, I don't know. If it, I mean, I doubt that I'm ever going to get there anytime soon. So it's not something that I've – whoops – something that I've particularly looked into. Oh, there we go. Seconds ago, it'd be nice just to get a legendary one just to show it. Not there, though. Last chance, no. Oh, well, one rare, not, not complaining about that. Yeah, nice. that's three. I think I've got now three rares, I think. Yeah. You got anything you want to open, Geo? And I'll just do my uh, my packs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's nothing that I feel like opening. Is my audio on? I got it. Yeah, audio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got a couple of Gladius cases. I got my Quora that I needed to get to, little, to get it to level three. So very happy about that. All right. Just for those following along at home. Two epics. All right, nice. that's Marisol. I like that start with epics. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that cool. goes. Three Kachovas, two gold foils. Three Katrobas, two me. golf worlds. Yeah. All right. Pretty decent. All yours, Matt? Uh, okay, Jack. So let's screen share. I'm still new at the whole screen sharing thing. Mm -hmm. Split lands tab. All right. Just two Gladius cases. Yeah, my, uh, my daughter, Evelyn, actually opened the Quora that I needed. So... Oh, she's, you've uh, got it. I got it, yeah. So, And, and you're only telling us that we should have opened with that, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's been such a, yeah, such yeah. a frustration. So, we, we should have, totally should have opened with that. Now I've got to decide if I go back to using legendary potions uh, when opening my Gladius cases because I've been, I've been not wanting to pull a legendary instead of an epic. That's how bad it got. Mm-hmm. Won't make okay. much of a difference, but yeah, might as well. Are you guys seeing that okay? You yeah. See the... oh, there, there we go. Cool. Get him? All right. Because when, okay. no. when it's been spinning for a while, if you refresh, then you actually lose what, you, what actually happened. So, yeah. Yeah. That... Yep, I did. I've lost what actually happened. Let me go right. to... This is good. So, if we go to... It's in here somewhere. Uh, opening view pack opening history. See that? So oh, yeah. I did lose it. I refreshed and did lose it. But yeah. now this is an education piece, right? So here we go. Two Gladius packs. This was just yeah. now. So we're going to replay it. It's dope that they've added that. 
yeah, it's so good. Otherwise, you could always go to Peak Monsters and look it up, but it's nice to just, all right. Yeah, to actually it, yeah, watch the open. opening. Yeah, exactly. This is really nice not having the stress of needing a Quora. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd happily take one, particularly in gold, if you're listening. Um, but it's really nice to just, like, yeah, let's go. Captain Katie, yeah. control bar. Yeah, there's a bit to like there. I'm not, yeah. un not unhappy. And uh, what have we got? Fifty, fifty thousand. I might just do a couple of, I might do a couple of sneaky, um, sneaky legendary draws. I got fifty thousand. Let's there just do can. it. Let's sneak it in. Just sneak it in. Oh, I can only do. Uh, no, I you're in batch. You're in batch two already, Matt. Wait, wait. Yeah, I'm in. It's only two. three days. It's only three days. Let's, let's get ten. Let's get ten epics. Okay. Clearly, I'm just wanting to spend. Just like gotta do it. I need that rush. All right, let's epics. Epic me up. Oh, triple wisp right at the end yeah. there. Nice. They're, they're pretty rare too. Yeah, I've I definitely needed them. Yeah. All right. So, anything else anyone wants to jump in with and share or? Should we go to some battles? I think so. Yeah, we could do yeah. some challenges. Uh, one, yeah. one thing that I noticed when I was actually battling with Killer Dragon at the pub uh, was there was one match where I couldn't use uh, Spark Pixies just after I'd been talking about it. And I went back and looked afterwards and I couldn't see the challenge in the wild tab. And then I went to modern tab and I could see it in there. So mm. I kind of feel like maybe we do <clears throat> have the capacity now to send challenges in modern or wild did you want to test let's that let's find out yeah all right so i'll send you a challenge matt yep so if you are you in modern tab or wild tab yep uh one sec i'm going to share screen because the option is there now so we're in challenges And we have up the top modern and wild. Mm. But I think the tab that you're in when you start the, when you click the challenge button, decides yeah. what the challenge is. Ah, okay. So this would be a wild challenge. So if you if you oh, cancel, oh, they have this, a modern tab. So you want to have I, want to try that? So I'll, I'll cancel. Just, I'll cancel, cancel that. Yeah. I'll go to modern. No, no, it's not that. And then click challenge. Yep. Now we're we're in modern. No, oh, is no, it in the drop down? It's on the allowed cards. It's on the allowed oh, cards. Look, ah, look, look, look. right. Yeah. That's what happened. Okay. All right. Good, oh, good well, spot there, Gio. Yeah, good spot. Added that. Well, I never saw it. But yeah. if I do this, if I choose modern here, then we won't have gladiators. No, you will. I reckon we do. Because gladiators are in modern. I don't know. Yeah, just let's, let's, let's do it to the test. So, what? Um, yeah. I'll cancel this. I'll go back to wild. Oh yeah, you're right. I'll go to challenge, and I'll select modern no, here. Right. Yeah, and let's yeah. see if we have gladiators or not. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you. Uh, they need to add another tab that's modern with gladiators. Mm -hmm. We'll find yeah. out. Yeah. Let's do it. Challenge accept. All you can right. always use a gladiator summoner if you really want one. Yeah, no, I'm just going to. This is just a test. So um, I'll just go. Yeah, no here. gladiators unless you choose the gladiator summoner. I'm just having a look now. Yeah, so no, def definitely no gladiators. <clears throat> so if you want gladiators in your challenge, so far you need to go wild. No, no, I want to test. There's another thing I want to test. So, um, uh, okay, I'm stuck now. I'll just quickly pick a team. <laughs> um, I noticed too, now I've got all of the um, Rebellion starter cards taking up space. Oh, that's interesting. I don't have. I'm not seeing them. Yeah. I'm so when I'm I'm oh, choosing yeah. my cards here, I've got the um, rebellion starter cards 
included in my deck. Still with us, Matt? Yeah, just picking my team. Yeah. Just doing the concentrate thing. Yeah. It's hard because I'm not used to modern. So I'm like, oh, I'll go Kralis. Uh, was my first thought, but again, modern. Uh, I'm just so totally wild in the head. But yeah, it comes up in your look. I was looking for the challenge and thinking, why well, couldn't I pick Spark Pixies? And then I went to my modern tab and it was in there. So I thought maybe yeah. he'd been on that when he hit challenge, but yeah, it's in the drop down. All right. Um, okay, I might have to refresh me... and then pull it from the menu. All right, here we go. All right. I think I've got this one. Yeah, I was just thinking with the scatter, I was just wanted to have just front attacks. I'm always hitting the same card. So I picked a mm -hmm. high mana card and then with the three mana left over, went with the muskrat. Um, but you got a lot of shields there, and yeah, and a bit of dispel too. So you're going to lose the benefit of your martyr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All I right. was uh, brought in the amplifier for magic reflect. So from the Imperial Knight, so you don't have to worry about that. You're not doing any magic damage, but a little bit of heal would have helped with this one. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, no. ooh, oh, no, redemption. Redemption. That was so close. <laughs> oh, no. That was good. Now, All Vida. Right. I like it. So now I'm going to go modern on the battle screen. I don't think that's going to make a difference. I think it's we'll in the we'll drop down. Because it... when I click on challenge, it's still got, and we'll go mm. gladiator cards. So even though it's see got modern at the top, and we'll see... See what options it gives us. Well, this All right, so we have server Earthquake, issues. Target practice, 38 mana, and everything's available except Death and Dragon. Mine's still spinning. Oh. Let's try a refresh. There we go. Okay, I'm in. Yeah. It's so hard with modern. All right, so I actually have um, beta summoners available here. That's interesting. So we're... Um, let me share not in this screen share. So, so we're definitely still in wild then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I pulled, so the, the tab, the tab up the top doesn't matter. That's all right. No, it's good to know. Yeah. I pulled my Alrics off the market today. They've been on there two weeks, and now there's like three or four maxed Alrics for a ridiculously low, like price, less more than half of the B, per BCX of what I'm asking. So, yeah, I just pulled mine. Uh, I'll show you them on the market soon. But they but, should be uh, fairly cheap to buy then if you wanted to max him out. Like, But uh, it's only the, the max the max ones that are like super cheap. Well, oh, a single okay. BCX are still quite expensive per BCX. So that suggests there's a lot of people in your situation trying to, trying to buy the, the few that they need to max out the one they have. Yeah.
How's the uh, Olympic Games opening ceremony? I uh, haven't seen. Yep, it was oh, a mockery. Complete mockery, mockery on you know who. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. A whole lot of drag queens in a in a uh, ripping off the the Last Supper, you know, the, yep. the iconic painting. Yeah. Uh, doing the, the posing this... like uh, look at us, we're we're replacing yep. Christianity. And it's that's disgusting. the thing. This is France, too, oh, yeah. a, a predominantly Catholic country. Uh, yeah. It was. And yet there's, there's a competitor there's a competitor, a surfer. <laughs> Who's got a, a, a? I don't know if he's Brazilian, but he's got the across the Redeemer statue from Rio de Janeiro, like mm, on his okay. surfboard, you know, with the arms outstretched. Yep. Not allowed to use that surfboard. I'm sorry, we're a secular competition, but we can totally mock your your um, your beliefs in our in our opening ceremony. Wow, it's, it's not it's not going well for them. <laughs> People all around the world are just like. <laughs> and half the commentators are saying, "Now do Islam," you know, the usual the usual response. Oh, they'll and never. I'll, I'll, and I, no, but a whole lot of yeah. Muslims are going. Yeah, no, this is rubbish. You can't, yeah. you can't treat Christians that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, don't forget. I mean, like Islam recognizes Christ as a prophet. It's, it's just the mm. Jews who murdered him and didn't accept him. So, like, no, is, Pharisees, Islam yeah. recognizes the prophets, recognizes Jesus. So, it, it's actually closer to you know, Christianity. So, yeah. Yeah, and so, that was cra crazy. Crazy that that one. Uh, remember that one vision on mushrooms I had. The cross was burning. They're attacking Christianity. Mm. You know, that's it, it's all but coming really, to fruition. Yeah. What's really funny is I I've been hearing through the grapevine various different atheists and non-believers are looking at this and going, okay, so <laughs> that's the target. Maybe mm. there's something there. Like exactly. you know, we, they rejected Christianity when it was the power. Right, that that sort of anarchist vibe, when when Christianity is the is the, the the thing that's in charge of the world, I'm rejecting it. But now they're looking at this and going, "Wow, okay, I can reject the world and embrace Christianity because the world really doesn't want me to." Right, and so there's a, there's a bit of a like, my enemy's enemy is my friend sort of thing. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. Well, how that's just out. it. These people who put on these shows and who orchestrate it all. I don't know how high up it goes, but they believe in the spiritual realm, mm. right? And so they only mock and belittle things in a way that they're threatened by. And they wouldn't attack something if they didn't think it posed any threat to them. Exactly so, right. You know, so that's the way I look at it, at least. And if anything, it strengthens, you know, a sort of, I guess, belief or call, you know, a call. And it's funny. It's funny people saying, it. "Oh, it's funny saying Christians are just going to take this on the chin and they're not going to rise up and whatever." But it's like the cheek. We're the not other, the, the other cheek, Matt. The other <laughs> cheek. <laughs> we're like we're not the violent type. But what I will do is mm. I'll love my kids some more. I might even have another one. Right. <laughs> That's how we respond. Yeah. Just being more wholesome. <laughs> Kill them with kindness. Yep. All right. So we we have a get a game on the screen. Yeah, I had to. I had to do it. Right? I had to show off my level three quarry. You of course understand. you did. Of course you did. Yeah. Oh well. But, I don't even know we're looking at the game. Okay, my bad. <laughs> I'm looking right now. <laughs> and you notice that my sneak card. I've actually got in second position with Possibilis to maximise doing your tank damage. So does this mean that your Chook is going to get last stand? I doubt it because oh, no, it's I've earthquake got a snipe. I've got a sniper. The, uh. the chook doesn't fly, so um, that was that's always a consideration when I'm looking for last stand. Is I want so, I want so an earth, environmental factor that's going to take gonna him kill, out. Yeah, that's going to kill my cards. I was risking that you would go Catrelba, and because if you'd have <clears> gone Catrelba, it'd be bam, bam, and she'd instantly be kill off those those last two zero mana cards. Yeah, and you would have won for sure. But uh, how am I going to not go Quora? Right? Yeah. Fair enough. I didn't actually go any gladiators at all. I just realised. My mantle I brought in to strip the wings off your uh, flies in the back row. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we'll see how it plays out. I think I've got it though. All right. Did you notice that my Palakor bandit actually went sneak and didn't go reach? Well, he's in third, isn't he? Uh, oh, because... yes, he's in third, of course. <laughs> I, was expect, I was expecting my muskrat to be dead by now. Yeah. <laughs> New rule set, ultra reach. 
<laughs> third card, you could attack from third position. So you'd be bloodlust and martyr. Yeah. All right, he did it then, though. He sneaked. He didn't reach. Yeah. From second position. The sneak must be more. Yeah, sneak, sneak overrides more, um, the summoner's yeah. reach. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Alrighty. But I've all been right. using her all over the place. Noxious fumes. Uh, what now else you is there? Too, all, all sorts of different. I was actually in modern here when we had the wild. So yeah, this button. It doesn't matter. You guys are both correct. This button does not matter when we go into challenges. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Gio, are you going to send Matt one? Yeah, sure. I can do that. And we're just doing wild, right? A right, gladiator. Oh. Yeah, if if yeah. you go modern, it means there's no gladiators. Yeah, I'd rather gladiator wild yeah. than yeah. Uh, Matt Clark diamond. Yeah. What if you? I mean, I don't mind. Because normally you're at a disadvantage because you're playing oh. like modern cards, right? So I don't, I don't mind doing modern and. Yeah, yeah I'm go, cool. go modern with no gladiators. Matt can't use his new Cora. <laughs> He's yeah. fighting nah. against Cora and he can't use it. Yeah, no, that's oh, that's not cool. Yeah, so we got no bad. we got no neutrals. Uh, all monsters have return fire, and all monsters have a rebirth. 41 mana, everything's available. Wow. It's interesting. This is a lot of a uh, few things that can be done. Huh. Oh yeah, no neutrals, huh? Well, that oh, don't. that makes it a little mm. bit harder. Just a little bit. All right, I got it lodged. Yeah, when you're talking about uh, not being able to use Quora, it was so funny. Uh, Killer Dragon was like talking about my my diverse card collection, uh, and I said, "Well, do you want to? We'll just swap seats, and you can we'll battle each other, but we'll be you know we'll um, be using each other's laptop, each other's cards." Yeah. Why has it uh, logged me out of the game? That's how much I beat you. I beat you so hard, it actually logged you out of the game. They call me Old um, F4. Has it worked? Yeah, could, yeah I got could you go back? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, bring it. Yeah, for some reason. Do you want me, me to just share screen? Yes, please. Right. We've, cr we've created a monster. <laughs> yeah, now he's got Cora and all of a sudden he's logging me out. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, well, you've got you've doubled up on the gladiators. Sure have. That's yeah. interesting. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is my worst nightmare. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you've absolutely savaged me. That was brilliant. <laughs> you, knew, you knew that I would like. Can you bring up the rule set, Jim? Uh, Matt, sorry, uh, can you bring up the rule set? Yeah, sorry. So you knew that I would just ultra inspire Katrilba. So you put your. <laughs> um, you put your uh, force shield mycelic slip spawn up the back. Oh, so look at that! Just six. <laughs> Brilliant. No, well done. You correctly anticipated exactly what I was going to do. I got inspire, 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 and I've made Katrilba so tough. It hits so hard that they're not hurting her at all, and I'm not doing barely any damage to Quora. Not at the moment. No, I'm not healing. I'm not. Oh, maybe. Might get her this time. Could... She yeah, doesn't heal. No. Nah. 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 <laughs> wow. No, that's ugly and dumb. Let's watch the whole thing because I deserve that. Although, how much time do we have? We've got 10 minutes still. Yeah. Oh, 10 minutes. Okay. Let's just sit here and because and, yeah. I want to see how, 
how beefy this Gora gets. Although you missed that death. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Need weapons training on this guy, on Thane. Okay, so there's your bloodlust. And again. And again. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, that turned out. Yeah, that's you know, but you to just be fair, Matt. You I wasn't exactly what I was gonna do. But I Cora didn't hasn't, exactly what Cora hasn't picked up a kill yet though. But no, but the, his control was getting insane. <laughs> yeah. It is the perfect counter, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Like for what you've chosen. And there yeah. goes your control bar. Oh no. I thought that was the second shot. Okay. Yeah, to be fair, my um Cora hasn't really like buffed up much. No, that's, no, that was that not. was her first kill, just then. Yeah, yeah. Now you finally killed enough of my Inspire cards that I can actually hurt your <laughs> slip <sport. laughs> once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that's oh, look at that! Look at Katrilba. This is an absolute beast of a card. And think about it: you've got no Inspire to boost her, yeah. right? <laughs> Which is probably probably why she was, you know. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Well but done, how Gio. nice Look is that, that as well? Like the Cora and the Katrauba combo with like the diversion of like a taunt and like triage or whatever. Um, yeah. I look at Katrauba there, 11, 13, 10, and 12. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I, don't like, I don't like playing two gladiators just because it feels like they're going to steal kills from each other. But yeah. um, I guess ultimately what matters is whether you win or not, right? Well, I just use Cora as, as a tank. That's, yeah. that's all she was. Yeah. There. All right, time for one quick more battle, so I'll send you one, Geo. All right. Be my guest. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been renting um, SPS, by the way. Okay. Yeah, I rented 100,000 for like, like 2,000 DEC or something. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. But in a boost... How long are you like, for? A week. A week. Yeah, that's not, not bad. bad. Yeah. <laughs> So I thought the same thing, like, whoa, why wasn't I doing this earlier? <laughs> and it's it's like worthwhile in the rewards? Yeah, I'm yeah. getting about over 200,000 glint for the end of season and my SPS per battle has gone up by like one SPS on average. Okay. So it seems all right. I think, I think, look, I don't know what the math works out to be, but... I know it's yeah. like diminishing returns. Once you get to a particular point, yeah. it's like it curves off. I'm wondering whether it's worth me like putting, you know, a, a hundred thousand times ten out on the rental market, and then you know I'm making twenty thousand DEC a week mm -hmm. in, if, like, if I'm not getting the benefit from that SPS in my own rewards, mm. it might be worth farming some of that out. Because be. I'm getting an eighteen x multiplier. Yeah. I mean, if that was just 17x, but it freed up a million SPS, well then, yeah. That's a good question. Not... All these guys with their spreadsheets. Exactly. All right. Um, hmm. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was saying before, it was Killer Dragon with his. Um, we, we swapped seats so he could play with my cards, and yeah. uh, we just did the one battle, and it was uh, common and rares only. <laughs> There's all these exotic, old, wild, legendary cards. That he's, I can't wait to play, and he didn't even get a chance. And so often you get beaten by a card and you think, oh, that's a great card. I'm going to get it. And then you do get it and you don't quite yeah, use it you, in quite. But you you're right. It's no, like, no, actually, it's yeah. not that great. Card. Yeah. It only looks like a killer because of the exact circumstance and the other <laughs> cards it was used with and that, that confluence of rule set and mana cap. Uh, it's good. I mean, that's, that's great. It's healthy for the game. All right. Oh, nice, Bob. You've gone with the... got two opportunity cards there, but it's um, equal health. Mm. So whoever gets hit first is going to keep getting hit. 
Mm. Hopefully, it'll he be got my taunt. taunt card. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it will. Yeah, because well, you're taunting. And if Larissa here can get some kills, that'd be nice. She's just yeah, that's going interesting. Up. I mean, your spread of blast too could be interesting in in um, blind. Uh, that's the flying. Sc the scattering blind. blast is awesome when it hits the right card. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, especially when there's when the rule set has this fewer slots available. Yes. Your scatter shot's less spread out than it would be otherwise. Mm -hmm. Or targeted. Um, yeah, right, maybe it's for the best. Let's play thing. it out. I've only got less than four minutes. Sting. That Dumaki dump... is so strong in Equalizer. Yeah, Dumb Cake was, was a great tank to, to put in for, for Equalizer, for sure. Yeah, we'll see how we go. So I mean, to hit too. yeah, I can't. Oh, yeah, that blind, man. Yeah, this might have just been. And the heel. I think it's Ooh, looking, looking good for Bob. No, my taunt needs healing. Yeah. It needs some healing. Ah, oh, no. Didn't get a heal in. I think it's over now. No, no, you still got blinds, man. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Blind. yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's far from over. This oh, radiator hasn't got any blood left Another yet. poison. Some missing going on. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're looking good, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're... Um, Nicely done. Are... Done. Nice. Yeah. Nah, cool. cool. It's been a while since I've beaten you, Jer. Yeah. Nah. Don't know what to say. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so any final words, any wrap-ups from anyone before we close off for this episode? Two minutes left on the clock. No, I think keep an eye on this space, you know, like with the Bitcoin conference going on and, and there's just so much happening in the world. I think uh, we, we've got, I don't know, it, it feels like we're coming out of a period of like listless, nothing really going on, and now there's this real momentum starting to build. Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing it on crypto Twitter. Um, there's a there's a, a feeling like, yeah, yeah, it's, and and almost like, okay, there are there are there are fewer reasons to be bearish. Yeah, like they're, they're they're kind of falling away. Political uncertainty and worldwide events, and yeah, yeah, it just it feel, it's I, I haven't felt like the future is bright for this, you know firmly for a long time and i don't know if that's just because spring is around the corner getting past some of that colder weather here in australia but yeah i don't know i'm i'm, I'm very um uh, optimistic about the future all righty geo any wrap up matt summed it up all perfectly right. all right so thanks for joining us on episode 133 if you'd like to be on the show comment below or hit me up on discord come on for a battle Come on to share a project. Chit chat. Come, come on to, yeah, just just chit chat. Don't have to show your face if you're camera shy. Just use an avatar. Many of our guests have done that. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on 134. I'm Boba Fett. Peace out. <laughs>